The ideal HP290 control box is a breeze to wire up. If your installation is not a pre-plumb cylinder and the control box is to be mounted independently, then it requires a bit of clearance to allow for cable entry and the removal of the cover. We need 200 millimeters around the sides and the bottom and 20 millimeters above the box. Front clearance can be as little as five mil if installed within a cupboard. Remove the four screws at the side of the box to gain access to the wiring center itself. Then, starting from the top, we have the wiring from our outdoor unit using the Cat5 5-core cable we spoke about in the outdoor wiring video. The terminals correspond with the outdoor unit. So, T1, T2 and E1 in the first section, and below this, we have XHA and XHB. These obviously need to match the outdoor unit. Next, we have our Zone 1 thermostat. If you're using the Ideal Halo Light or any other third-party thermostats, this wires here. If there are two zones, then your installation for the second thermostat wires below it. A thermistor to sense the hot water temperature is next up, and if you have a pre-plumbed cylinder, this will be pre-wired. If not, make sure that it's correctly fitted to the thermistor pocket within the third-party cylinder itself. The Zone 2 thermistor is not required for single zone systems, but if you have a two zones pre-plumb cylinder, this will be pre-installed. Below here, you will then see the contactor. This contactor controls the operation of the immersion heater. 230 volt mains power is routed through the upper gland to be protected by an RCD circuit and compliant with regulations. The output connection from the contactor then goes directly to the cylinder immersion heater through the bottom gland. Across the bottom bank of wiring connections, we start with a power supply, which can be used to power the RF thermostat receiver. Secondly, we have connections for a backup boiler if running a bivalent system, and then our overheat stat for the cylinder. This is already installed on the pre-plumb cylinder, and then as we move along to the next connection, we have our diverter valve. And lastly, our central heating circulation pumps. One is used for a single zone and the option of a two zone pump is also there.